It's a live chat show where all the chatting happens on stage. So follow standard arc light rules and turn off your goddamn phones, unless you're Instagramming. I'm your announcer, Adam Levin. This is the house band, the administration. And please welcome your host, Kennedy! Coming out to the Kennedy administration, number two. We did number they, we did number one last month. Tonight we're doing number two. So it's great to be back at Echoes Under Sunset. Let's give it up for Echoes Under Sunset. We've got a uh, we've got a great show for you next month. Next month's gonna be great. This month's pretty good. It's pretty good, but next month. We're really saving it up for next month. Right, Adam? Something like that. Yeah. This is Adam Levin, the show's producer. Let's give it a You, you going to get to it, or what, what's going on? You know, I'm just taking my time here. I'm just letting it all settle in. We got a really great write-up in the LA Times last week. That's true. Uh, that was very excited about that. Didn't even have to sleep with the guy who wrote the article. That's good. That was just, that was extra. That was, my, that was my, just for fun. My roommate actually had to sleep with his boss. <laughs> but that's how it works at the administration, because as the head of the administration, I don't put myself in the line of fire. That would just be insanity. And the guy's article was like, he was telling me stuff in the article that I didn't even know about myself. So apparently, I went to London for like five years. Don't even remember that. Did I tell you about London, Adam? Were you there? You did tell me about London. Are you paying attention? I, someone was handing me money, and that always takes precedence. That's, yeah, that does. Um, did I ever tell you the story about my booking agent in London? No, what's his deal? Well, do you want to hear about my booking agent in London? I'm going to start with a little story. Here we go. So, uh, it was kind of like a cross between maybe Rain Man and like Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, just kind of eccentric. Um, Usually on some sort of weird drug like ketamine, you know, the usual. But he, um, he booked for some pretty big acts. Like he booked this band, the Scissor Sisters, who are like, they're like a big act overseas. 
um, and he got fired by them right when it was about time for his birthday. So we had this big birthday party, and for his birthday, he decided to have a party that was themed as you have to dress up in a politically incorrect costume. So of course, his whole office came dressed as the Scissor Sisters, because he had just gotten fired by the Scissor Sisters. But he decided to one-up them, and I'm really sorry to take it here, but it's a true story, so I can say it. He dressed in a Ku Klux Klan, <laughs> Klan outfit in blackface. Exactly. And the party was in this like country manor in the English countryside, and it was really fancy. And of course, they're like drinking and taking all these drugs, and he's like, it's like sweating profusely, and the the blackface is like running all over his. <laughs> he looked like something out of Saw Four. Um, and people are giving him these birthday gifts, and they're like, you know, Alex, here's a birthday gift, and he's like, right, right, and he's just putting the birthday gift straight in the fireplace, <laughs> without even opening it, straight in the fireplace. So have I told you this one already? <laughs> I don't, maybe I have. So my friend Adam, he shows up and he says, Alex, please don't put this, this gift into the fireplace because you're really going to like it. You're going to love this gift. So Alex opens the birthday gift up and he pulls out and it's a remote control helicopter. And he puts the batteries in the remote control helicopter. He turns it on and he flies it into the fireplace. <laughs> And that's the story of my booking agent in England. Thank you very much. Good night. Our next guest had a hip-hop career so underground, you've never heard of it. He's now the curator of Gallery 1988, a host of the podcast Get Up On This, and develops content for the YouTube channel Jash. Please welcome Jensen Karp. Give it to me, baby. Pretty fly for a white guy. What if I came out with blackface and a Ku Klux Klan outfit? That would be awesome. I would have planned that, that earlier. I mean, I, I don't know if there's actually anyone here who isn't white. It's Echo Park. It's yeah, not true. anyone other than white people. And all of Echo Park. Th thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I just went to your gallery. I went to, Jensen has an art gallery. Are you f anyone familiar with his, this man's work? Cool. <laughs> Pretend. It's my kind of room. <laughs> How did you get into the art world? Um, well, uh, about 10 years ago, I had realized that all my friends were spending uh, $300 on sneakers and like, you know, a couple hundred dollars on, on handbags. But you I thought you were going to say hand jobs. Yeah, well, uh, that was me. That's pretty cheap for a hand job. Yeah, uh, it's a shitty hand job. Uh, but I uh, would go to their house and I would see like ten dollar uh, Scarface posters or like babies in pee pods on their walls, and I never understood why there wasn't as much uh, emphasis on uniqueness on their walls as they were on sort of their physical person. So I uh, started to focus on like twenty to thirty year old artists and pop culture and things that I would like at an affordable price. And now ten years later, we're still doing it. And everyone's been there, which is the best part. Hey. Yeah. And so before you did this, what did you do? Uh, as a kid, <laughs> when I was 18 years old, I entered a, a radio contest on Power 106. Uh, and I uh, jokingly entered a rap battle, uh, just as a joke. I was an intern on a, a really great film called Flintstones Viva Rock Vegas. It's, uh, <laughs> Fucking classic. One of my um, favorites. One of my favorites. I was obviously looking for another job. Uh, and so I entered this radio contest and I battled against people as a joke. It was all sort of a mockery. I was, I'm good at rapping though, that's not a joke. I was a decent rapper. Uh, and I won 64 days in a row. Uh, it was the person before me, the highest ever was 14. Uh -huh. uh, so I walked, I was a USC student, and I, and I sort of walked off this show after that many days. And then Jimmy Iovine gave me a million dollar record deal at Interscope. Yeah, now, now, as a joke. Tell everybody what your name was as a rapper. Um, well, when the radio contest goes, what's your name? I assumed if I fucked up, I didn't want anyone to know it was me. I could still sort of have uh, a good face at USC. So before you go, yeah. by the way, Jensen Karp is the raddest name you could have anyway. If you're like a Jewish bagel, Jensen Karp, I, I'm cool with Jensen, but Karp is like a, you know, that's a pretty serious. Is that kind of, is that kind of Jewish? Well, yeah, well, it's like, it's like, it was, it was something else, right? It was like Karpowitz or Karpestein and then at Ellis Island they were like, no, 
don't do that. You will be completely uh, judged by anti-Semites. Uh, so they just gave it carp. Uh, but at the time, I was like, I don't want to be Jensen, or I don't want to be Jensen Carp. So I just said the first thing that came to mind, and I don't know why, uh, but Hot Carl was the first thing that came to mind, <laughs> which there's no good story for it. Other than the idea that it's a slang term uh, for when you shit on someone's chest. Uh, which I turned into a million dollar record deal, which you have to keep in mind. So you kind of gave Jimmy Ivey your own hot Carl. I did, and I ran away. Uh, it's she always deserves. funny, though. It was always funny, like, when they would meet you and they'd be like, what's your name? And I'd be like, hot Carl. And then they would just go, oh, nice to meet you. And you're like, they don't know, you know? And then as they were sort of introducing this 18-year-old Interscope rapper to people... Uh, it would be fun to see who knows and who doesn't. So they were trying to get me to do a song at the time, remember, this is like 2000, with Christina Aguilera. And they bring me in a room and they go, this is Christina Aguilera, this is Hot Carl. And she goes, what the fuck? For reals? And I was like, Christina Aguilera knows what a Hot Carl is. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, that's the best. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Now, do, do you consider yourself a tastemaker? No. I, I mean, I, I think that I'm early on things. Can you go to school to become a tastemaker, like at Barbizon or...? Yes. It's uh, a, a great school in Silver Lake. Take your kids there early. Um, no, I, I, I don't think so. I think that I just... Uh, my whole life, I've sort of... Uh, pr I've been proud of being on things early, whether it's like, you know, the Wu-Tang record or something that I was just into before other kids. And I don't go around thinking it's terrible that now someone's super famous. Like, I don't, I don't care that MGMT, everyone knows who they are. I think that's amazing. They should be rich, and everyone should be rich and make money if they make good art. Um, so I think, in a sense, like, I... I like things early, but I don't own this possession. I don't have a possession of them where I don't want you to be in them. And I think that's the worst part of being a tastemaker. If you were like, listen, get into this, but when you're into it, I'm going to judge you. <laughs> and you d I don't want to be that person ever, so. That's how I was with the Jonas Brothers. Yes. I was like, these yes. guys are fucking hot. And then everybody liked them. And I was like, fuck. I love. I read. No. I read a story. No. I read a story the other day about how um, one of the Jonas's. I don't know their names, uh, which makes me a tastemaker. Um, but I, uh, one of them, it was reported he's married and that they're uh, sleeping in other rooms uh, because he's uh, a snorer. And I was like, yes, a very serious fucking gay snorer. <laughs> <laughs> Gays do snore. Yeah. So it's fair. That's the moral behind that story. <laughs> Now, do you know there's someone with a fake Twitter account under your name? Yeah, well, I know there's a couple. <laughs> I, I started, I went to college before the stupid Hawk Carl story. I went to, to, to college for comedic writing, for, for writing scripts and focus on comedy. And uh, then that rap thing happened. Uh, but I, Twitter is a great thing for me because it gets, I'm, I'm able, I have this gallery that pays the bills and then I'm able to get out my humor and my comedy stuff through Twitter. And it surprisingly has like a decent following. It has like 25,000 uh, followers. And when I opened it, it, it's based on these businesses I was running at the time. And I didn't think Twitter was going to be anything. I was just like, well, I'm just going to be Jensen. And then I was running a business with a friend called Clandestine. So it was Jensen, C-L-A-N, and then for 1988, 88. Seems makes sense. It's a cute nickname. I forgot that like Clan is fucking super racist. Like you can't. You can't just call yourself clan. As like we learned earlier. Yeah, you can't just do that. This uh, is the Grand Wizard right here. So, so there's a fake Twitter that's Jensen Clan 88 but with a K instead of a C, and it just takes <laughs> all my tweets and makes them racist. <laughs> like, I'll be I'm, tonight I'll be at a chat show, it's free at the administration, and then they'll do it again and be like, we're hanging blacks. <laughs> like, at the end of it. <laughs> all right, now as a tastemaker, I, yeah. I, can I give you the ultimate tastemaker test? Yes, please. Now, the Kennedy administration is now officially endorsed by Jelly Bellies. Woo! Yeah, because, you know, Reagan was into jelly beans. I, don't, I wasn't even alive during the Reagan administration, but I hear that they were into the jelly, bean, the jelly beans. So we've got Jelly Bellies. So are you have, like, a sugar allergy no, or anything? No, 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 no. All right. I'm going to give you my favorite flavor, but usually most people's least favorite. Close your eyes. It's vomit. No, it's a Jelly okay, Belly. All right. And you're going to feed it to me? Can I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to feed me. All right, here we go. Okay. I'm going to do the choo-choo train. Ready? Okay. Choo -choo. Did, did you say close your eyes or did I make that up? No, I said... That. Okay, <laughs> fine. Wow. All right, let's go. I like go. your let's style. <laughs> He's on acid. Okay. Am I supposed to... This is, this is... I'm supposed to guess it? Yeah. I realize I'm terrible at this. Is it pina colada? 
I don't know. You ate it. <laughs> How am I supposed to know? It's yellow. I thought it was buttered popcorn. That's my favorite. No, flavor. that was not buttered popcorn. That's your yeah. Okay. You're a fucking sadist. That's the All worst. Right. Jensen. Yes. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Great right to I have appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Oh yeah. We would have a girl come escort you out, but um, she didn't show up, unfortunately. <laughs>